Hello and welcome to Binfield Free Church's Easter Sunday evening service. Thank you so much for tuning in. We're so glad that you're able to join us for this time of worship. And we're going to begin our time of worship with the very word of God from the book of 1 Peter and the first chapter and verses 3 to the first half of verse 6. So 1 Peter chapter 1 starting from verse 3. This is the word of God. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. And into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil or fade. This inheritance is kept in heaven for you, who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. In all this, you greatly rejoice. Amen. This is the word of God. Let us worship God in prayer. Let us pray. Our oh, Lord God Almighty, we praise you and we worship you as the one true living God. The one God who is three persons, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Father in heaven, thank you that we can pray to you because of Jesus. Jesus, who suffered, bled and died for our sins, who rose from the dead and ascended on a high and is exalted at your right hand now. Father, thank you that we can pray to you by your Spirit, your Spirit who rose your Son from the dead with power. Oh, Lord Jesus, we praise you and we worship you as our risen and exalted Saviour. Oh, Lord Jesus, we thank you that we have the same hope and great joy as the Apostle Peter had. We thank you that you have risen from the dead. And this good news changes everything. Thank you, Jesus, because of your resurrection, we don't need to be afraid of the future, afraid of death or afraid of bad news. Thank you, Jesus, because of your resurrection, we are no longer slaves to sin. Thank you that we have died to sin and are alive with you. Oh, Lord Jesus, we thank you because of your resurrection. You are already reigning as King of kings and Lord of lords. All evil dominions, wicked authorities, and powers now stand defeated and one day they will be destroyed forever oh lord jesus we thank you that your death is the death of death and your resurrection is the resurrection of all things thank you jesus that you died for our sins and that you were raised for our justification. So Lord Jesus, in light of this living hope and compelling love, this measureless grace and eternal inheritance, may we spend the rest of our days living and loving to your glory. We pray this in your resurrected and reigning name. Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, our main Bible reading for this evening's message comes from the book of Romans, the Apostle Paul's letter, inspired letter to the church at Rome, and the sixth chapter and the first 14 verses. So Romans chapter 6, and this is 1 to 14. Let's go ahead in my Bible, dead to sin, alive in Christ. Let us receive God's word. 
What shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase? By no means. We are those who have died to sin. How can we live in it any longer? Well, don't you know that all of us who were baptised into Christ Jesus were baptised into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that, just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly also be united with him in a resurrection like his. For we know that our old self was crucified with him, so that the body ruled by sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves to sin, because anyone who has died has been set free from sin. Now if we died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. For we know that since Christ was raised from the dead, he cannot die again. Death no longer has mastery over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives for God. In the same way, count yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body so that you obey its evil desires. Do not offer any part of yourself to sin as an instrument of wickedness, but rather offer yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life and offer every part of yourself to him as an instrument of righteousness. For sin shall no longer be your master, because you are not under law, but under grace. Amen. This is the word of God, and may he bless the reading and the preaching of his word. Shall we pray for the preaching of God's word? Oh, guide us, O oh God, by your word and spirit, that in your light we may see light, in your truth find wisdom, and in your will discover your peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. So during this time of constant bad and sad news about the effects of the coronavirus, I'm sure you'd all love to hear some good news. Well, you've come to the right place on this Easter Sunday evening. Because the church, God's people, exists to share the good news. Now the Bible often uses just one word for those two words, good news. And this one word is gospel. And that word gospel appears over 90 times in the New Testament. And gospel simply means good news. So what is this gospel? What is this good news? Well, what does the Apostle Paul write in his first chapter of the letter? He wrote to the church at Rome, Romans chapter 1 and verse 16. What do we read there? This is God's word. For I'm not ashamed of the gospel, because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes. First to the Jew, then to the Gentile. The gospel is the power of God for everyone who believes. But what is the content of this gospel, this good news? What is the content of the good news? Well, the good news is more about a person than about the content. What do we read in Romans chapter 1 and verses 1 to 3? 
Paul, a servant of Christ Jesus, called to be an apostle and set apart for the gospel of God. The gospel he promised beforehand through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures regarding his son. So the gospel, the good news, is all about Jesus. Always has been, always will be. But what is the good news about Jesus? What is so good about Jesus? Well, what do we read in the Apostle Paul's first letter to the church at Corinth? And the 15th chapter and the first four verses. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verses 1 to 4. Now brothers and sisters, I want to remind you of the gospel I preached to you which you received and on which you have taken your stand. By this gospel you are saved, if you hold firmly to the word I preached to you. Otherwise, you believed in vain. For what I received I passed on to you as of first importance, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures. The good news about Jesus is that he died for our sins and that he was raised from the dead. And this is what billions of people all over the world are thinking about and celebrating today. Now the Apostle Paul really wanted to visit this local church at Rome but he was prevented from doing so. He really wanted to visit this church at Rome to preach the gospel in Rome. Paul was so eager to do it. So he was prevented from doing so. So he decided to do the second best thing. He was going to write to them. And he was going to write to them about the gospel. So the book of Romans is Paul's inspired letter to the church at Rome, giving a summary of the gospel. Now the gospel is all about Jesus, his death for our sins and his resurrection. And you can almost imagine that this letter to the church at Rome would have been read out sort of publicly in one sitting. And it would have taken about an hour to read the letter to the Romans. And as the church were listening to this letter being read out publicly, they would have heard about the resurrection of Jesus Christ at least 12 times, explicitly 12 times. Because the resurrection is central to the gospel. The resurrection is central to the good news about Jesus. So what I'd like to do this evening is look at what the Apostle Paul teaches us about the resurrection of Jesus Christ in his epistle to the Romans. Now, we're not going to have time to uh, look at everything the Apostle Paul taught about the resurrection, but I'm going to make six very brief points. And the first point is the resurrection was an act of God. Now, who is God? Well, the most basic and fundamental truth about God is that he is a family of three persons. One God, three persons. God is Father, Son and Holy Spirit. The three persons of God were involved in the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. What do we read in Romans chapter 10 and verse 9? Romans 10 verse 9. If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Now in the New Testament, when the word God is used without reference to Jesus or the Holy Spirit, it usually means God the Father. And what do we read in Galatians chapter 1 and verse 1? Again, the Apostle Paul 
writing an inspired letter to the Church of the Living God, Galatians chapter 1 and verse 1. Paul, an apostle, sent not from men nor by a man, but by Jesus Christ and God the Father who raised him from the dead. So God the Father rose Jesus from the dead. But look at what we read in Romans chapter 14 and verse 9. What do we read there? Romans 14 verse 9. For this very reason Christ died. That's something Christ did. He died and returned to life. That's another thing that he did. So that he might be the Lord of both the dead and the living. Jesus rose himself from the dead, just as he had promised during his earthly ministry. What do we read in John's Gospel? And the second chapter, and verses 19 to 22. So John chapter 2, and verses 19 to 22. This is the word of God. Jesus said, destroy this temple and I will rise it again in three days. They replied, it has taken 46 years to build this temple and you're going to raise it in three days. But the temple he had spoken of was his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples recalled what he had said. Then they believed the scripture and the words that Jesus had spoken. And what do we read in Romans chapter 8, verse 11? Romans 8, verse 11. So we see that the, res the resurrection was the work of God the Father and also the work of God the Son. But then Romans chapter 8, verse 11 says this. And if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give to your mortal body bodies because of his spirit who lives in you. So the resurrection of Jesus was an act of the triune God, God the Father, God the Son and God the Holy Spirit. The Trinity worked together to create the universe and the Trinity worked together to do this gospel work of the resurrection. And this is a lesson for us as a church. We should do gospel work together. We need to work together to share the good news about Jesus. Now this doesn't always involve running meetings or events together or giving out literature together on the streets, or knocking on doors together. Now it is important that we do those things together when we are able to do it. But working together for the gospel also involves praying together, and encouraging each other, and supporting one another. So the resurrection was an act of the triune God. Point number two, the resurrection is proof that Jesus is the Son of God. What do we read in Romans chapter 1 and verses 1 to 4? The first four verses of the epistle. Paul, a servant of Christ Jesus, called to be an apostle and set apart for the gospel of God. The gospel he promised beforehand through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures regarding his son, who as to his earthly life was a descendant of David and who through the spirit of holiness was appointed or declared the son of God in power by his resurrection from the dead. Jesus Christ our Lord. Now when God the Eternal Son 
became flesh and blood for those 33 years on earth, it was obvious to everyone that he was a human being. But it wasn't obvious to everyone that Jesus was the Son of God. But when Jesus rose from the dead, that was proof to everyone that he was God. Because no one else has ever died and raised themselves from the dead and gone up to heaven with their resurrection body. Only God could do that. Now, if you don't believe that Jesus is God this evening, look at the resurrection again. This is proof that Jesus is God the Son. Point number three. You have to believe in the resurrection to be a Christian. What do we read again in Romans chapter 10? And this is 9 and 10. Romans 10, this is 9 and 10. If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified. And it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. If you don't believe that Jesus rose from the dead, I have to tell you bluntly that you can't be a Christian. What did we read in 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 3? Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy he has given us new birth into a living hope. How? Through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. It is through Jesus' resurrection we are given spiritual new life. Now if Jesus didn't rise from the dead then we are spiritually dead. We are still dead in our sins. Point number four. Because of Jesus' resurrection, we are justified. What do we read in Romans chapter four and verse 25? The last verse of Romans chapter four. He, that's Jesus, was delivered over to death for our sins and was raised to life for our justification. Now, if you've been justified, it means that you are just. And if you are just, it means that you are right. Now, the book of Romans clearly tells us that the human race is not just. Humanity is not right. The book of Romans tells us, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And because we are sinners, because we are not right, we're not right with God. Our sin has separated us from God. But Jesus lived the just life that we were supposed to live. And he died the death that the unjust should have died to bring us into a right relationship with God. But how do we know? How do we know that Jesus lived the perfect life? And how do we know that his work on the cross actually worked? Well, because of the resurrection. If Jesus had lived an unjust life, then he would have had to die for his own sins on the cross, and he wouldn't have been raised from the dead. But because God the Father was pleased with Jesus, his perfect and obedient life, because God the Father was pleased with Jesus, his sacrifice of himself, Jesus was raised to life. Jesus, his resurrection, is proof, is proof that God was pleased with him, was pleased with his life, and his sacrifice. So because of Jesus' death and resurrection, we are justified. We can be told, you are all right. You are not guilty 
anymore. I love the words of Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8 and verses 32 to 34. What do we read there? Romans 8, this is 32 to 34. He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Christ Jesus, who died, more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Isn't that wonderful? Now, we only need to sit still for about 15 seconds and we might remember the sins of our past. And we only need to go a few hours into the day before someone might remind us of our past sins. But God never does that. God never reminds us of our past sins that we've confessed to him, that we've repented of. Our past sins that have been washed away by the blood of Jesus. God doesn't remind us of those. I love the hymn, Before the Throne of God Above. Uh, the second verse goes like this. When Satan tempts me to despair and tells me of the guilt within, upward I look and see him there who made an end of all my sin. Because the sinless saviour died, my sinful soul is counted free. For God the just is satisfied to look on him and pardon me. Isn't that wonderful? Now, when a believer does sin, God the Father is satisfied to look at Jesus who lived the sinless life that we should have lived. When a believer does sin, God the Father is satisfied to look at Jesus who died the death we should have died. When God the Father looks at us, he sees his son, Jesus. Wonderful. The fifth point, Jesus' resurrection sanctifies us. Now, sanctification means living a holy life. And because Jesus has risen from the dead, we can live a holy life. What do we read in Romans chapter 7 and verse 4? Romans 7 4, God's word says, So, my brothers and sisters, you also died to the law through the body of Christ, that you might belong to another. To him who raised from the dead, in order that we might bear fruit for God. We are created to bear fruit. And we can only bear fruit because Jesus has risen from the dead. Now, our main Bible reading was from Romans chapter 6, verses 1 to 14 which is all about being dead to sin and alive in Christ. Now, when the devil tempts us to sin, what should we do? Well, we need to tell him that we don't need to listen to him anymore. When the devil tempts us to sin, we need to tell him that we don't belong to him anymore. When the devil tempts us to sin, we need to tell him, I am dead to you. When the devil tempts us to sin, we need to tell him, I died with Christ. I've been raised with Christ. And I live 
with Christ. So, the resurrection was an act of the triune God. The resurrection is proof that Jesus is the Son of God. You have to believe the resurrection to be a Christian. Because of Jesus' resurrection, we are justified. And Jesus' resurrection sanctifies us. So sixthly and lastly, because of Jesus' resurrection, we will be glorified. So because of Jesus' resurrection, we have been justified. And because of Jesus' resurrection, we are being sanctified. And because of Jesus' resurrection, we will be glorified. What do we read in Romans chapter 8? And this 11. Romans 8, 11. And if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies because of his spirit who lives in you. Isn't that incredible? The same Holy Spirit who rose Jesus from the dead is living in you. If you are a Christian this evening, if you know Jesus as your Lord and Saviour. So we not only have spiritual life because of Jesus' resurrection. We will also have a physical new life because of Jesus' resurrection. Because of Jesus' resurrection, we will also have resurrection bodies just like Jesus' physical resurrection body. So when will that happen? When will we have this resurrection body? When Jesus comes again. When Jesus comes again, we will see him and we will be like him. And we will be with him forever and ever in the new creation. We will see the Lord and we will be with the Lord forever. Let us close by receiving the benediction from the book of Hebrews and the 13th chapter. Now may the God of peace, who through the blood of the eternal covenant brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, equip you with everything good for doing his will. And may he work in us what is pleasing to him. Through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory, forever and ever. Amen.